Eric Paul Zinger with 9 to 5 Sports. Going to be getting into the Monday Night Football game. We got the LA Chargers versus the Denver Broncos. And just looking at the game over and under, it is set at 46, which I think could be a little bit high. We'll see about that. It'll be close, I think, though. Um, and the LA Chargers are favored to win by four points. And that is something that I think we could see the Denver Broncos finally step up today tonight we'll see it could be an ugly game okay we're going to get into the top picks and plays for this slate as well as the lineup process for this slate if you guys enjoy this make sure to give a like and subscribe that helps out the channel a lot do want to give a quick thank you to today's video sponsor sports battle app sports battle app is a prop based daily fantasy sports app a lot of you guys are familiar with those apps out there right now well sports battle app is a new one out there that is Kind of easier to use, I think. And you guys can download today. Get some free money out there. Get some free bets out there. Take advantage of that. That's the nice part about kind of all these new prop-based apps coming out is that it's a lot of free money being thrown your way. So if you use the promo code 9TO5, you get $5 cash back on a deposit of over $50 or more. Plus, you get the 100% match as well. So take advantage of that. I have posted on the screen above some of my favorite prop-based bets on tonight's slate. I like Ben the under on a lot of them. Okay, you got Russell Wilson under 32 passing attempts. Justin Herbert under 35 and a half passing attempts. Uh, it keeps going like Corwin Sutton under receptions. I think this is going to be a gritty game. Thus, you want to be attacking the under, I think. But you guys can go in there and make your own personal bets as well. All right, let's get into the day's picks. All right, so just starting out with the Denver Broncos, I do think the first play that I want to be on is going to be either Melvin Gordon or Mike Boone. Now, we do have to monitor the, the situation of Melvin Gordon. If he sits, because he's currently questionable, if he sits, then Mike Boone would just be an absolute stud captain's play. Okay, he'd be the one player that you want to go out of your way to play. If Melvin Gordon plays, I think he'd be the captain's play that you want to go with. Now, I do think there is a path in which both Mike Boone and Melvin Gordon can be the you know top scorers on this slate. It's just going to be more tough for Mike Boone to do that. And also, you know, I don't know the stats of Latavius Murray just yet. I don't know. Mike Boone looked good, so I just don't expect Latavius Murray to be active in this one. We'll have to wait and see. Melvin Gordon played in 56% of the snaps last week and was able to score 13.3 DK points. And he looked pretty solid last week. I, I don't think anyone would doubt that. A lot of people just like to hate on Melvin. And then we also do have Mike Boone at a very cheap price point there for the Denver Broncos. 7.2. Um, pretty cheap. Okay. Uh, last week... Mike Boone saw 41% of the snaps and, you know, did look pretty good on the ground and was also effective in the passing game. Okay. There's a route in which both of them can go off and have a good game because, well, the LA Chargers have been a team that you've been wanting to attack via the running game a lot. Okay. So if the Denver Broncos are going to win, I think it'd be via the running game. And I kind of think that is why the Denver Broncos can win this game. You look at the Broncos kind of strength, I guess, if you will, it has been running the football. And you look at the glaring weakness for the LA Chargers. Uh, the whole team wise it's been via the running game okay so i do think one of these running backs are going to have a very solid game it's just which one is it going to be or is it going to be both of them okay if melvin gordon sits that makes the lineup process a lot easier and i'll show you guys that lineup process at the end of the video okay for now i'm going to assume that melvin gordon is going to play which makes the lineup process a lot more difficult and then from there Cortland Sutton, you just kind of have to go ahead and play seeing over seven targets in each game thus far this season um seeing over 90 percent of the snaps as well like he is just on the field a ton getting a ton ton of targets as well sure the chargers dbs are pretty solid you know he could only score about 15 dk points I, I think it'd be shocking to see him get a ceiling game like 22 dk points but he should be able to get double digit dk points and at that price point it's not too bad um jerry judy you know he can score okay it's not like it, out of the question for jerry judy to have a good game i just i don't know he's just never been a guy that i like talent wise can he certainly produce he can it's just tough because like he's he's only okay as a player but he is playing a lot of snaps 89% of the snaps in week one. He was a little bit banged up in week two and week three. Didn't play that many snaps, but the last two weeks, 89 and 85% of the snaps. So I think we can predict that he's going to be a guy that's going to be on the field a ton as well. So that's the worry there for me is that Judy could just be on the field so much that he's able to hit value. I also think someone like KJ Hemler could finally be the value play that I've been wanting him to be this whole season. It's been crazy, guys. He is so cheap and he's on the field a decent amount in games that he's been healthy. Okay. In week one, he saw 61% of the snaps. Two, three, and four kind of banged up, didn't play that much. Last week, saw 53% of the snaps. I think we all saw that clip of him being wide open at the end of the game as well. Okay. Like he is someone that I just feel they should get the ball to more. And I know the Chargers have been very good at shutting down the slot corner. And that's my biggest hesitation with KJ Hamler is not really the playing time and not really the ability. It's more or less. 
the matchup slot corner wise is one in which you've been wanting to stay away from this year. And so that's my biggest hesitation with KJ Hamler. Like on the slate, he's probably one of the best values except for that matchup. And that's the biggest worry. But can he do enough to get to like nine DK points? He could. Obviously, it'd be shocking for a lot of people, but I just I feel like his role is going to continue to expand in this offense. It just should. So Eric Silbert would be had someone that we have to pay attention to because he did play a lot kind of recently in week four, saw 77 percent of the snaps. And in last week, he saw 56 percent of the snaps. OK, he was able to see seven targets last week. If he is someone that is active and plays, I do kind of expect him to be the tight end play that we want to go with. And like I just said, with KJ Hamler, you kind of just been wanting to stay away from the slot corner against the L.A. Chargers. Well, then we might just be forced into playing um the tight end value here. And if he does sit, he's currently questionable. Maybe Eric Tomlinson becomes a play. He's been playing about 50% of the snaps. I just, he's more of a blocking tight end. We kind of know who he is as a player. Uh, that's not something I want to go out of my way to play. And then the biggest question would be Russell Wilson. Now, I know you guys saw at the beginning of this video for the sports battle app um, prop bet. I think that he's going to be under 35 passing attempts. Um, he's done that three out of the five games thus far. And I just don't think they're going to have to pass that much. Like the way you beat the Chargers is running the football. So I do worry about the passing attempts. Like I typically want to target quarterbacks are, are going to get over 40 passing attempts. Now, could Russ run the ball a little bit more like he has been? He certainly can. Okay. And I do think he can be efficient in this game. Like, can he get to 15, 16 DK points and be in a profitable lineup? He could, but at this price point, it is certainly risky. Obviously, if we are playing, you know, Court and Sutton and you know a tight end and maybe even another receiver then you'd want to favor russell wilson a little bit but at that price point you could possibly stay away from him all right and now getting into the la chargers as we can see the denver broncos have been a defense that you've been wanting to avoid they've been able to hinder a lot of fantasy production for like key players okay so the biggest question is will austin eckler be a valuable asset on the slate and i i don't really see it honestly guys like the last kind of three weeks actually a lot of the season he has He's had favorable matchups. You look at the Las Vegas Raiders, a matchup that you're not worried about. The Kansas City Chiefs, a matchup you're not worried about. The Jacksonville Jaguars, a matchup that you're not worried about. And then the last two weeks, Houston and Cleveland, two defenses that you've really been going out of your way to play a running back on. Uh, he's really absolutely dominated, but he only was playing 59% of the snaps in those games. Okay, he's still giving carries away to Joshua Kelly and sometimes sony michelle so that's the biggest worry for me it's like is that role going to continue to be that minimal like only about 60 percent of the snaps is not something that i like the thing with it is though with keenan allen out we are seeing that he is going to continue to get targets in the passing game and will that be enough to hit value given the matchup that's the biggest question i have will his four that he has in the passing game be enough to overcome the matchup that's my question because i don't see him having a great game running the football okay It'll probably be one of these first two games. That's kind of what I expect. The volume will be there, which is great, but the price point's high, okay? I could see him getting like 15 DK points, and you got to ask yourself, is that enough to cash on the slate? I, I don't know. That's the biggest question. Like, I'd rather play Mike Williams, even though, even though the Denver Broncos defense and DBs have been great as well. Patrick Sertan, oh my goodness, guy's been great, okay? So that's kind of the worry. Mike Williams has seen over 10 targets in three out of the five games, okay? That's great. The issue would be, could he have one of these dud games? Because in two out of the five, he's had dud games. And I'm kind of leaning more towards that. I'm kind of leaning more towards staying away from the LA Chargers. Okay, that's my biggest worry is that it's a very tough matchup. And certainly Mike Williams can make some great contested catches. And I think that's going to be the difference. Like they're going to have to throw some jump balls to Mike Williams and hopefully he can win that one on one. I just worry that's that's going to happen a little bit too much. And thus he's going to be a play that you want to avoid. Now, Justin Herbert's kind of the same thing as Russell Wilson. I do think he's going to be able to get to like 15 DK points. Okay, the matchup hasn't really mattered thus far. Um, I I just worry. I just, I do. I worry about the matchup with the Denver Broncos. It is a difficult matchup. They've been a very strong defense. Given the fact that he is still banged up, you know, like we're not forgetting about that injury. I just, I worry about the production that can be there for him tonight. Like 15 DK points, sure. That's really all I'm, I'm hoping for if I play Justin Herbert. And so what you're probably finding yourself asking right now is like, all right, well, which Chargers players can I play? And that's really the biggest question. Like Josh Palmer is certainly pretty cheap. Um, you know, he had one bad game against Houston there, um, played a decent amount of snaps, played 56% of the snaps in that game, only saw one target. He did get a little bit banged up for that game though. Okay. He basically sat out the whole third quarter and then came back in the fourth. Okay. So I don't think we have to worry about that. I think we are going to see closer to the 70% of the snaps that he had been seeing previously. In week one, he saw 75. In week two, 90. In week three, 90. Week four, 56. 
because he got injured, banged up in the game, I should say. And then last week, 73% of the snaps. So in all those games in which he's had kind of a significant role, let's just go with week two, week three, and week five. Okay, because obviously Keenan Allen played a little bit in week one. I mean, not that much, but I think the game plan, you know, was centered around Keenan Allen a little bit more than it was. Keenan played about 33% of the snaps. You guys get what I'm trying to get at. I do think we are going to see closer to like six targets. Okay. And if, is that going to be enough to maybe hit like eight DK points? And at 5.8, like I, I can take that. I'll take that. Like Josh Palmer, it should be a good value play. It's not something that I love. It's not something I'm going crazy with, but it could be a route that you're going. You know, DeAndre Carter has been someone that's been playing a surprising amount of snaps. Since week two, he's played in over 59% of the snaps. So like at this price point, it's cheap. And they have been manufacturing a player or two to him each week. Uh, he's just, he's like a big play guy that they're trying to get a big play out of him. Okay. And maybe that happens. It's not something I'm chasing. 2.6 is cheap though. Like you could try to force that into a couple of builds. I don't love it, but I could see a path in which he does make a splash play like he did in week one or like he did in week two. Okay. Those could be there. I just don't love it. Honestly, the biggest difference maker on the slate could end up being the Los Angeles Chargers tight ends. Okay. We got Gerald Everett, who has been very impressive thus far this season. Okay. But with Parham Jr. active last week, playing 38% of the snaps and Trey McKitty playing like 50% of the snaps, we could see Gerald Everett just not being that productive like he had been in the previous weeks. Okay. His worst week was last week, gained three targets. Prior to that, had been pretty productive. And I do think that's a little bit due to the other tight ends coming in and playing a little bit more. But Gerald Everett has looked good. Like I do still think he's going to play about 60% of the snaps. And if there was one spot in which you want to attack this Denver Broncos defense, it is via the tight end. Okay, so you could go with Gerald Everett. Parham Jr. saw 38% of the snaps last week in his first game back being healthy. Could we see that number go up to 50%? I think we could. He has been someone that has been a, don't want to say a fantasy asset, but he has had some good weeks here and there. Some good games here and there, okay, where he just catches a touchdown or two. Okay, that's really what you're hoping for if you play Parham Jr. It's just like a lucky one-off touchdown and maybe another catch. You're hoping that the snaps increase, but still 1.4 is a pretty high price point for trying to hope and pray for that to happen. And so here, as I try to close out this build, you guys see my biggest issue with this slate. Like, I wouldn't mind getting up to Austin Eckler here. I would like that a lot. Actually, I've just kind of been going with Russell Wilson, hoping for 15 DK points, and that's ugly. Okay, we don't love that. So from there, what kind of different changes can we make? Let's try. And so here's kind of a unique lineup path you could go with. You're targeting both of the running backs on this slate, and thus you wouldn't want to be on Russell Wilson. Okay, and then you are going with Mike Williams, Josh Palmer, who you're hoping that they just get to like nine and 10 DK points. Uh, Jerry Judy, I don't love, as you guys kind of heard me state but could he get to eight dk points he can and then you're just really hoping that the broncos defense doesn't kind of just break the slate and i will say i didn't really mention this in passing but i do think the broncos defense kind of being the lowest price of the kickers in defense i actually like them the most um i do expect the chargers offense to not be as elite as they've been and you just look at the denver broncos defense it has been pretty strong can they get to seven dk points on the slate they certainly could and at 3.4 they are certainly in play they're the one kind of kicker and defense that i'm going out of my way to play on this slate but this is a pretty unique build obviously if mike boone is the only or if Mike Boone's starting and Melvin Gordon's out, then Mike Boone, you're just putting into the captain spot with some pretty high confidence. And then probably Latavius Murray would be the second option that you can go with. Latavius Murray would probably see about 30% of the snaps. That's not locked in, but that would open up the slate a lot more. You could get Justin Herbert. You could get Russell Wilson. You can make a lot more stuff work, okay? And that's kind of what I like about potentially the slate. Another decent build. I'm just trying to get some builds out there. It's, it's Monday morning. It's early, okay? We still have a lot of injury news that we're waiting on, but we'll see as the night goes on all right that's all i have for you guys for this video hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did please give me a like and subscribe that helps out the channel a lot if you guys want to become a nine to five member you can use the nfl lineup optimizer on the showdown slate for tonight okay it's ten dollars a month including that is the nfl cheat sheet as well as the golf package the golf package is the big selling point thanks for watching guys and as always let's keep cash